Hey everyone, Chuck here. Let me explain what this is going to be. As you may or may not know, I also co-host a movie show with three of my friends called the Bad Movie Themes Podcast. But I wasn't an original co-host of that show. I didn't join until well after they'd already established themselves. And as a result, there are 80 to 90 movies that I wasn't around to give my opinion on. Well, you know how I love to give my opinion. So this video series, which is an exclusive to the Bamcast Patreon for a limited time before appearing on YouTube a month or two later, will have me reviewing all those movies I missed. Then I'll pause the review and go listen to the original Bamcast episode. I'll then come back and offer any thoughts I might have on my castmates' opinions. Fun, yes? Okay, let's get started. Episode 1 of the Bamcast was 2006's The Wicker Man. An easy target, right? Now, full disclosure, I saw this when it first came out, and I had some fierce opinions about it. But with those opinions and the passage of time comes perspective. Now I know what to expect out of this thing. Let's see if it can deliver on what I want from it now. Also, heads up, much like how we discuss movies on the Banffcast, this review will contain spoilers. I don't normally do that with my videos, but there's no way to talk about The Wicker Man without talking about its specifics. You've been warned. Nicolas Cage plays a motorcycle cop on leave from his job after a terrible accident in which a young woman and a child were killed. Or not. They may not have existed but they probably did. In any case, he then gets a get well card from his former fiance, claiming that her child has gone missing. He decides to trek over to the creepy cult island village where she lives to investigate. Immediately, everyone on the island is acting in overtly suspicious ways, complete with cartoonishly blatant lying and comical shifty eye movements. But the great thing about all this is that Cage's character isn't shy about pointing out how absurd everyone is. Do you, Violet? No, can't say I do. Just a tip there, it often helps to actually glance at the photo. Usually in movies of this type, where weird things are constantly happening, the main character just seems to accept them or keep quiet about it. But here, Cage is making sarcastic remarks about everyone's behavior, and it brought me a great deal of joy to have a main character reacting to things as I would. They mostly come up with credible reasons why Cage is continuing to endure all this behavior, too. The only real way off the island is by plane, which only stops off once a day. Eventually, it is eliminated from the equation altogether. And there's no cell phone signal on the island, so despite his multiple attempts, Cage is unable to make a call. He's probably not as forceful as he should be about leaving, and after interacting with the first two to three people he meets, he should have bailed immediately and come back with a task force to tear the island apart, but I'll allow it. I think much of the audience just doesn't get what this movie is doing. Cage has said in interviews later that it's supposed to be an absurdist comedy and that they were doing it all on purpose. I mean, it's certainly not much of a thriller or a horror movie. You can't have the main character constantly speaking for the audience through one of these things if you want to build and maintain tension. This is more like Cage going on a ridiculous adventure and we're along for the ride. Honestly, you can't wait for him to just start punching these people in their bizarre smug faces and that's just what he does to one lady before then kicking Lily Sobieski damn near through a wall and almost out of Hollywood altogether. Then he dons the infamous bear suit to lead into the finale, which is where all my problems with this film arise. The Wicker Man becomes a snuff film, basically. Okay, yes, Nicolas Cage wasn't actually burned alive at the end, 10 seconds before the credits start to roll, but his character is indeed tortured and then murdered, followed immediately by the credits. I was watching this thing end, and at first I was waiting for Cage's character to escape somehow, although it's clear that's just not going to happen. So then I'm waiting for someone in the crowd to come to his rescue. Again, that ain't happening either. So fine, you've killed the main character of your movie. At least have something happen after that instead of just fading to black. What was the whole point of this? I'm not against a downbeat ending, mind you. Seven is one of my all-time favorites, and that thing sure doesn't have a cheerful finale. I just feel like the main character's death here has to have some kind of resonance or relevance or something. Is this character's death tragic? Not really, because it's established that no one will really miss him as he's kind of a loner. Did he deserve being stalked and manipulated for years to lead him to this very moment? As far as we can tell, no, he seems like a good guy. So what we get is a senseless murder, which will go completely unpunished and unsolved forever, just like in everyday life. What fun! Ultimately though, it's just not the ending this movie needs or deserves. A straight horror movie, sure, it would fit. 
it would suck, but it would still be relevant. But for this movie, no, fuck these people on this island. They don't deserve to get away with this bullshit crime scot-free. I'm giving The Wicker Man three jocks though, because I enjoyed just about every moment of it up until the ending. It would have gotten four jocks if it weren't for that. It does have some minor problems along the way, such as the overall plan these ladies have that makes no sense at all. Also, Cage's hair is a bit of a distraction all throughout this thing, but all the little Nick Cage bits that everyone makes fun of, those are great. They're what you want from Nick Cage in a stupid movie like this. Tell me! I, yes, I, I think it's, yeah. How to get burned? How to get burned? I, How to get burned? How to get burned? I don't know! And while this isn't a fault with the film itself, how much do you want to bet there are idiot men's rights activists out there who think this is exactly what feminism is and why they have to rage so hard against it? Like this is some sort of proof of concept or something. Idiots. Anyway, I'm going to go listen to the old Bamfcast episode now. Back in a second. Wow, that's a bizarre experience listening to the genesis of this podcast. Uh, Ah, uh, okay, so there's a lot of hyperbole in this episode about how bad this movie is and whatnot. A shocking amount, actually. But over time, I feel like we've found ways to embrace movies like this for what they are. And I wager that if they were to rewatch it today for the show, it would get higher marks for its entertainment value, good or bad. Mackie does make the point I wanted to make earlier, where at one point Cage gets locked in an underwater crypt which makes no sense if everyone's master plan is to sacrifice him a few hours later. So I appreciate that I wasn't the only one who thought, hey, wait, hold up on that. But, but don't, just don't go back and listen to that episode. I, I know the guys aren't very fond of it. Just, um, just know that they ripped the movie to shreds and that I think today they would feel differently about it. Now I'll leave you with this moment, which is the moment from The Wicker Man. It's part of the ending, so it's terrible, but... Yeah, the CG is bad, Cage is overacting just a bit too much for something that's not even real. It's, uh, it's just a very bad moment in the worst sequence of the film. But just know that it isn't the whole film, and there's a good time to be had before things ever get to this point. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Out of my eyes! My eyes! Ah!